Can we keep this going for people who maybe are away? Maybe there's a legitimate reason why they can't be in the building on a Sunday morning and they're able to watch. And, and, and of course, you get to go and rewatch. Galatians 2 verse 11 says, Now when Peter had come to Antioch, now let me just clarify, I love the fact it's just when Peter came, it's not the apostle archbishop Peter. It's just when Peter, Peter. The Pope of Jerusalem, when he came to Antioch. No, no, no. It's just when Peter came to Jerusalem. Ah, uh, came to Antioch. Peter. I mean, Peter was like the leader of the Jerusalem church. Peter. Love it. Now, when Peter had come to Antioch, I withstood him to his face. Paul's got some gut. What he is a respecter of is your faith and my faith. He's not a respecter of person. No, you can have any title, any whatever. It makes no difference to God. And it made no difference to Paul. So he says... He says, those who came, uh, uh, where am I? Uh, verse, verse 12. When certain men came from James, he would eat, before certain men came from James, he would eat with the Gentiles. But when they came, he withdrew and separated himself, fearing those who were of the circumcision. So easy to do that. And the rest of the hypocrite with him. So that even Barnabas, Barnabas being Paul's good friend, even Barnabas was carried away with their hypocrisy. But when I saw that they were not straightforward about the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter before them all, If you being a Jew live in the manner of Gentiles and not as the Jews, why do you compel Gentiles to live as Jews? For we who are Jews, now Paul can say we who are Jews because he is a Jew. We who are Jews by nature and not sinners from among the Gentiles. Now he's not saying the Jews are you're not in God. You're not the covenant people of God. So the rest of the people who weren't Jews would have been considered sinners. You guys are all sinners. We're the covenant people of God, and you guys are all sinners. And Paul's now going to just help us understand what that looks like. He says, we are Jews by nature. That means we're born Jews, physical Jews, and not sinners of the Gentiles. We understand this, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. That right there is as radical a statement as you'll ever get. Because for thousands of years, they lived with this understanding that you are justified by the works of the law. And the works of the law, it, it means sincerely trying to live as the law in demanded and intended for us to live. I'm sincerely trying to live as the law intended me to live. That's the works of the law. Anytime I try to do something as a law, I'm falling into that category. That a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ. Even we, that means even us respectable Jewish sinners, even we have believed in Christ Jesus that we might be justified by faith a greater sense of godliness. I'm a better Christian than that person because of, and then you can fill in the blanks. We've got to make sure that we don't step into the exact same, basically, bigotry that the Jewish Christians had walked in. Right? So Peter himself, he had understood that faith in Jesus Christ, it's, it's, it's faith in Jesus plus nothing, Minus nothing. He had begun, begun to live very much in a non-Jewish way. God had, God had, there, there was a vision that God gave him in um, Acts chapter 10. And he had this vision of what I call clean, don't, you can't call, don't, don't call unclean. What I've declared clean, don't call it unclean. And Peter had had this transformation that was taking place on the inside of him. Where he had begun to understand that God's not into all of that stuff that he had lived his life in for so long. And so he had begun to live very much in a non-Jewish way for, for many, many years. Remember, this is a, this is a long time that, that we, we talk about. The, uh, it's a few verses maybe, but it's a long time as far as years is concerned in the, in the Christian church. So Peter had been in Jerusalem. He traveled around. He'd gone to Cornelius' house. He'd done various different things. And he landed up in Antioch. And he was living with the Gentiles and hanging out with them, fellowshipping together, doing life together like you and me. We're doing life together. We're having brides together and hanging out together. But then certain men came from James. Again, these are Judaizer type people. Certain men came from James, it says. And he says, when they came, Peter stepped into a place of hypocrisy. And he distanced himself from the Gentiles and started eating separately. And then all the other Jews that were with him did the same thing. What happened is that they, in that moment, they're now no longer presenting the clarity of the gospel to those around them. They're now demonstrating to them, well, actually, hang on a minute. Um, we, we, we are afraid of these people. So there's obviously some power in this thing. And now we're teaching the Gentiles that, well, if you start to eat and live in a Jewish way, well, then you're going to be a true Christian. Then you can fellowship with us. Because Jews didn't fellowship with non-Jews. So, so if you want to have fellowship with me, Peter had been doing that anyway. But now he'd stepped into a place of hypocrisy. 
And he was and basically demonstrating to the Gentiles that, well, now you must eat like Jews if you want to still hang out with me, because I'm scared of those people. And Paul cuts through that thing. Intimidating false brothers. They came claiming to represent James. They came claiming to represent leadership from Jerusalem. And this is the thing that I want us to hear and realize, is that legalists are intimidating people. I'll say it again. Legalists are intimidating people. It is very easy to be afraid of them. If Peter could step into that, so can you and so can I. We can step into that place of control. Step into that place. Even this man who was the leader of the Jerusalem church was carried away in this thing. And then even, even Barnabas, he has a close friend of Paul's, got carried away in the same hypocrisy. And what I love about Paul is that he's, he, he wants the clarity of the gospel to be preached. So he's willing to withstand Peter, and he's also willing to withstand a close friend so that the truth of the gospel might remain with the Galatian churches. Legalists do not like people finding freedom. Paul knows that because that was the truth of his life when he persecuted the church before he met Jesus. Legalists did not like people finding freedom. And the freer you and I get, the more we will will experience and see that legalistic tendency to want to control your life and my life. But at the same time, the freer we get, the less it will have an effect on our lives. Paul was free. These guys were an irritation in Paul's life, but he was free for them. He wasn't intimidated by them. He wasn't held back because of them. He just kept going after what Jesus had told him to go after. He didn't turn around, oh, I can't believe I'm being so persecuted by these people. He just went on doing what Jesus told him to do. You guys following me? Okay, so Paul states the gospel. I want to read these verses in verse 15 and 16 as I land. I want to read these verses clearly again so we can understand it. Paul states the gospel. He says, We who are Jews by nature, not sinners of the Gentiles, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by faith in Jesus Christ, Even we have believed in Christ Jesus, that we might be justified by faith in Christ and not by the works of the law. For by the works of the law, no flesh shall be justified. And at no point does Paul go on to say, you then need to add the works of the law to your life after that. And that that he's going to outwork a little bit later on in Galatians. Legalism can rear its head in so many different ways. And it can look so incredibly sincere. But if we keep going back, and the, the reason why we get caught out is because we don't go, keep going back to the truth of Scripture. If we spend time, I love the book of Galatians. I've read it many, many, many times, and I intend to read it many, many, many times into the future. Because I need the truth of these words to sink into my heart and change the way I think. So that I can live the way Paul lived, and not live in a place that gets intimidated, not live in a place of control, not live in a place where I add extra things onto my Christianity. And I want to encourage you and me, let's, let's dig ourselves into Scripture because when, we, when someone comes and says something, just because everybody's going after that thing doesn't necessarily mean it's right. Just because there's a new bestseller out on the shelves and, it, and it's sweeping the internet world, have you heard of the, and I could mention some names, but I'm not going to, have you heard of the, dot, 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 oh, it's prophesying all of this, or, have you heard of the, have you heard of, I'm like, Jesus plus nothing? Jesus minus nothing. Faith in Jesus Christ. We have to understand what Paul means when he says justification. And this is where I'm going to end today. And I want us to leave with this this understanding. That we understand what justification is. In Paul's mind, justification is God declaring you righteous in Jesus Christ. Righteousness is basically you are in right relationship with God. God declares you righteous. Righteous. So when Paul says we are justified, not by the works of the law, but through faith in Jesus Christ, he is saying it is through faith in Jesus Christ that I am justified. Galatians chapter 3, he's going to go on to say, it is through faith in Jesus Christ that you and I are sanctified as well. The, the, uh, the, the growing in holiness, the working it out, he says, having begun in the spirit, are you trying to add these things onto your life to become more perfect? And we're going to get there. He's making it very, very clear that it starts at the gospel and it ends at the gospel. It's not, okay, Dave, and I understand you're preaching the salvation message again. I get that. But now we've got to get on to true Christianity. No, this is true Christianity. The gospel, the salvation message of Jesus Christ is true Christianity. And it's that message 
that outworks things in our lives. It's that message where the, where the maturity comes in. It's that message where the power of God comes in. It's not that message, okay, cool, the starting point. Now you need to add all these and do all this stuff and have all this stuff added onto to become a true, true, true Christian. Am I making sense? So sometimes I say that for my own sake. <laughs> and I, sh- I probably shouldn't. I'll, I'll try to say it less. Anyway. Um, so I've jumped around a little bit. Justification is different to new birth. New birth is something that God does on the inside of you. You were dead. You came alive. That's something that happens on the inside. It's an experience. You feel it. You go, I'm no longer, I'm no longer dead. I'm alive. I'm, I'm, I've come anew in Jesus Christ. But what justification is, is something that God does outside of you and outside of me. Through our putting our faith in Jesus Christ, he declares something in the heavenlies. It's like in the courtroom of heaven. He makes a declaration. He says, righteous. He, th- he says your name and he says, righteous, righteous, righteous. So now you walk out of the courtroom and you mess up. Well, the beautiful thing is it's not based on your performance or mine. It's based on Jesus' performance. And he's, he was a perfect performer. And so when you and I mess up, God still says righteous because you're righteous in Jesus. See, if we're righteous in anything else outside of Jesus, it becomes about us again and our works. And so just as much as a sinner can't do a whole bunch of good things, feed the poor, you know, do all these good things, amazing things, and that makes them righteous. In the same way, a righteous person can't do a whole bunch of sin and become a sinner. (laughs) I'm not preaching heresy. I'm just preaching the Bible. (laughs) So, So when we think about legalism, we think about justification, we think about walking in freedom, there are going to be things that get said that are going to jar us. And it's in that moment we have to think in our own heads and go, Is there something legalistic that I'm believing in my mind and in my heart that is keeping me from true freedom? Because if, if, if just, I I agree, I agree, I agree, I agree, I disagree. Then we basically put a limit on what God wants to do in our lives and we get stuck in a place of maturity and we don't move on into greater maturity. So your, your, your good works before you were in Christ didn't make you righteous in the same way. Your mistakes in Christ can't make you unrighteous. Yes, that does mean, that does mean I can go out and do what I want. True. Why? Why? Why would, why, why would someone who knows how loved they are, how justified they are, how clean they are, how holy and pure they are, why would the next thought be, I can go and do what I want? Why? It doesn't doesn't even make any sense. Right? You following me? You know, when I'm just, maybe this is a silly analogy, it's just popped in my head now, so maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I'll just use it anyway, take it or leave it. I I have four kids now, so I'm driving to church this morning with four kids in the car and got my wife. Now, I could be driving, so there's six of us in the car. These are are the people who are closest to me in my life. I love you all, but those five are the closest to me in my life. Okay? So, so, because I love them, there's a speed limit that says 60 k's an hour, for instance, okay? But I, I, I have the accelerator at my foot. I can go any speed I want to go. I'm not governed by the speed limit. I'm governed by my love for my family. Anyone here ever sped, gone fast in speed limit? See, you know what the law does? It makes you want to do what... Someone says, don't do it. You go, oh, I wonder what that is. Don't put your finger in the cookie jar. Oh, I want to do that. There's a the speed of it. Now, you've got to also understand that the laws of the land is not the law God is talking about. There's a di- there, there are different types of laws. The law is what we see in the Old Testament of the way in which the Jewish nation lived. That law is not going to justify you. It's not going to sanctify you. It's not going to do anything for you. It's only going to make you, you, you feel worse. It's only going to take you to a place of death because the wages of sin is death, right? You got, you got that. There is a law on this land, but put that aside. The reason why... I drive the way I drive is because I love the people in the, in the car with me. The reason why you and I live a certain way and make right choices is because we love people around us. Paul's going to go on to St. Galatians, and these things will be clear as he goes on. He says, do not let your freedom become an opportunity for the flesh. 
The flesh, he doesn't say an opportunity. He says, he doesn't then say, well, I need to put the Ten Commandments on you to help you walk right. No, he says, the Ten Commandments are too low a level. They're too, they're too low a level to live by. The life, life in the Spirit goes way beyond the Ten Commandments. If, if, the greatest, if our level of spirituality is the Ten Commandments, we really have a problem in our lives. The Ten Commandments are part of the law, and they're not going to make us righteous. Life in the Spirit. Life in the Spirit is what leads us to live correctly, make the right decisions, love each other, care for each other, be kind to each other. We're not going to use our freedom as an opportunity for the flesh because we love each other. But we mustn't... We mustn't take all of that and then try and help that to explain away justification. We need to understand that justification is you're justified because of Jesus, not because of your works. Which means your good works can't get you into heaven, your bad works can't get you out. Does that make sense? Uh, maybe this will help some of us. Our justification is not the same as our personal holiness. Our personal holiness will be imperfect. We will make mistakes. There are blind spots in our lives. There are things that we aren't aware of yet. We haven't repented of them because we're not aware of them. The one who follows Jesus Christ, when you become aware of something, you repent and you move on. But there are things, I'm just promising all of us in this room this, that as you grow in maturity, there will be things that you will discover and realize about yourself that you need to repent of. Now, that doesn't mean that for that whole time there was a problem in your life. No, it's just God is growing you in becoming more like Jesus. But your starting point is completely righteous, pure, holy in Jesus Christ. And as we live and as we do what we do and as we follow Jesus Christ, he shows us things, he reveals things to us, and we repent of those things and we move on. But it's not those things that determine our level of holiness or not. It's the Jesus that determines it. Amen? Okay. We're not justified. We're not made holy by any form, any sense, or any little section of the mosaic law it is completely through faith in jesus christ and if you just remember that this week if you just wake up every single day going i am righteous in christ and then you get up and do your day and then tomorrow morning you wake up and you go i'm righteous in christ and get up and do your day and the next day you get up and go i'm righteous in christ and get on with your day and the day after that go i'm righteous in christ you know what's going to start to happen you're going to start to believe that you are righteous in christ and if i'm righteous in christ then then life is going to look something like heaven coming to earth through my life. Amen? Okay. So that's where we're going to leave it today. We kind of got to verse 16 of Galatians chapter 2. And um, I'm really enjoying this because these, these are the things that set us free. And I really pray for every single one of us in this room that we will step into a greater level of freedom because of these words. When we read scripture, it's got to bring us into a place of freedom. And that legalism will fall off our lives in Jesus' name. So I invite you to stand as we, as we close in prayer this morning. It's all about Jesus. I'll say it again. It's all about Jesus. We live our lives on Jesus. We fall back on Jesus. We land on Jesus. Jesus plus nothing. Jesus minus nothing. It's all of him. Amen? And if every day this week, as we live our lives, we remind ourselves, I'm righteous because of Jesus. One thing that will happen is it will cause a spontaneous burst of praise from the inside of us. Every time you think about the fact that I'm righteous in Christ, you realize it's not about you or me. In that moment, it's like, well, this is not about me. It's all about him. And in that moment, you go, oh, Jesus, I'm so grateful you saved me. Thank you for your salvation. There'll be this, there'll be random Random weird moments in the middle of pick and pay where you'll spontaneously burst into praise and some other weird person will be walking down the aisle and say, oh, you must be a Christian too. It has to be true because in his presence is fullness of joy and you carry him. You're righteous, you're carrying him. So there's going to be these spontaneous things that are going to happen. The other things that are going to happen is you're going to start to recognize that I used to, that thing used to irritate me. It doesn't irritate me so much anymore. Now, I don't know about you, but I've tried really, really hard sometimes. I've really tried to not get irritated about something. And the more I try, oh, it's happened to you too. That's amazing. I thought it was just me. <laughs> but the more I realize who I am in him, and remember, it's not about me or you, it's about him. The more that happens, the, more, the easier it becomes to, oh, that, that's how Jesus does things. Oh, wow, that, oh, that sounded a little bit like Jesus in my life. 
oh wow, I didn't react the way I reacted last week in that area. That, something must be happening because my focus is not on me and trying to fix me and get a whole bunch of works done in me. My focus is on him, the fact that I'm righteous in him. I'm justified by him. I'm not justified by the works of the law. Whether I was a respectable sinner before Jesus or whether I was a dirty, rotten sinner before Jesus, both of us need Jesus. Amen? Let's close our eyes. Father God, I thank you for this morning, for these moments we've been able to have together. And Lord, I pray, just simply, Lord God, I pray this morning that the revelation of your gospel will transform our hearts and our minds. And God, I pray if there's any legalism in our lives, any works of the law, any wanting to add on even some of these things from the old covenant as we see through scripture, any of that stuff, Lord, that we will repent of those things and we'll allow them to fall off us even right now in this moment. Traditions, things we've grown up in, church traditions, that we've grown up in maybe 30, 40, 50, 60 years, it can be so hard for these things to fall off us. I pray, Lord, for just a supernatural moment of freedom to take place. In Jesus' name, Lord, that freedom will take place in this place. It's for freedom that Christ has set us free. Freedom. Pray, Lord God, for freedom in our minds, freedom in our emotions, freedom in, in the expectations that people place on us and that we place on ourselves, that there'll be a freedom to live one way and one way only, and that is following you. Life in the Spirit. Holy Spirit, we recognize, Lord, that you are attracted to the humble heart. You're attracted to the one who understands that I have to fall on Jesus Christ and on nothing else. You're attracted to the one who goes, I cannot be justified through my own works. I can only be justified through faith in Jesus. You're attracted to faith. I pray, Holy Spirit, that we will not push you away through legalistic, religious control, that we will stay free in our minds and that you will lead us into greater freedom and greater levels of faith that attract more of you and more of your working in our lives. We want to see, as Ethel was saying earlier, as he closed worship, we want to see those testimonies not just be the stories of the other day, back in the day, but that they can become the stories of today in our lives right now. Because we need you. Lord, this world needs you. South Africa needs you. The nations of the earth are crying out for freedom. And freedom can only be found in you, Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord God, we pray again that revival will sweep across our nation we pray lord god that you will not miss us but that you will use us that you will revive us revive our hearts revive us on the inside so that you so that revival can take place on the outside god we know that you want to do something amazing in our day we will keep our eyes on you and we will keep trusting you and we'll keep persevering for the breakthrough in jesus name in jesus name we love you god we love you god we love you, Lord. If there's anyone in this room today and you are battling with sickness, I want to ask you just to put your hand up. You Maybe it's a headache. Maybe it's a sore shoulder. Maybe it's pain in your back, whatever it might be. If you've got pain right now in this room right now, hand up high. And I'm going to just ask if we can just, if there's, there's a whole bunch of hands over this side. There's a few on this side. If you see a hand that's up, can you just go to them, just lay your hands on them. Ask them if it's okay to put the, your hand on them. And if they say it's fine, then just put your hand on them and we're going to just pray together for them. We're not going to pray big, long prayers. We're just going to pray a simple prayer of faith because Jesus is our healer. Simple prayer of faith. The key is faith, not the cleverness of our words. The key is faith, not a whole bunch of religious statements. The key is faith. So if your hands are up, we're going to just, Let's just begin to pray for them right now. If, is there anyone that doesn't have someone praying for you? Just put your hand up high. Anyone that doesn't have someone praying for you? Over that side over there. You know, some folk over there, Sammy over there in the corner by the window. Thank you, Lord God, for faith that has been rising in this room this whole morning. We trust in you, Jesus. Our faith is in you, Jesus. You're our healer. And we know, Lord God, that you desire to heal. When you walked on this earth, you, you healed all who were oppressed of the devil. Healed all. Thank you right now, God. We can just speak physical 
Healing in Jesus' name. Emotional healing in Jesus' name. Psychological healing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. If you're in this room today and you have not, have not given your life to Jesus Christ, he wants to heal you spiritually too. He wants to bring you out of darkness into his marvelous light. The best decision you will ever make is to say yes to Jesus Christ. But what that doesn't mean is not just a moment where I say yes. That, that, that means, Jesus, you become Lord. Jesus, you're now in charge. I'm no longer in charge of my life. You're in charge of my life. And you free me from being captive to the enemy to do his things. And you free me to be able to live how you've called me to live. You bring me out of darkness into glorious, marvelous light. So if that's you here today, and you say, I want to give my life to Jesus. I'm going to ask you to put your hand up nice and high. Put your hand up nice and high. We have a hand. We have a hand. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that, we can clap for that. That's good. That's good. That's good. That's awesome. And I ask you to come and see me straight after this. Okay. Jesus, I thank you for everyone in this room. We just pray your blessing upon them. In Jesus' name. God, may our lives be transformed this week. May we walk and live as free human beings following you.